Hey, Shoujo fans, welcome to episode 66 of the Shoujo Sunday podcast. Since it is our anniversary month, we will be weekly. This week, we will recap A Sign of Affection episodes 1 through 3 with special guest Ayu of the Sparkle Side Chats podcast. Let's dig in. <laughs> Hey, hi, Ayu. Hello. Yeah, I'm so excited to finally be on. <laughs> yes. Okay, this has been this has been a long time coming. Oh, yes. Because Ayu has had both me and Gianna on Sparkle Side Chats. Yes. <laughs> and so we have been wanting Ayu to come on Shoujo Sunday for ages, and we kind of Actually, we did think, okay, when we venture into a magical girl anime, then we're going <laughs> to pull Ayu. But because of the way that our slate is this year, we knew that the magical girl show was not happening, but we still wanted Ayu on. So we're just thankful that you love a sign of affection. And we're just <laughs> like, oh, I could come on for this. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, of course, I'm most known for my... Love of magical girl shows, that is definitely the vast majority of what I watch. But I do like watching and reading other things, of course. And since I generally prefer female protagonists, I do usually consume a lot of stuff that is in the shoujo jose realm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before we start, like, start off into A Sign of Affection, we just want to ask you a few questions. Of course. So... Uh, for the uncultured, just kidding, uh, the people <laughs> who did not know about the Sparkle Side Chats podcast, could you explain what your podcast is all about and what you cover? Sure. So Sparkle Side Chats, the full title Sparkle Side Chats with Magical Girl Ayu, because that's me. Um, it's a podcast where we cover Magical Girl series of uh pretty much all demographics. And I generally have a guest on every episode. Um, it used to be a weekly podcast. This year it went uh, bi-weekly. But um, yeah, every episode we cover either a show or a season of a show or a fragment of a show if it's like a super long one. And yeah, we get into like what it means for the genre and all this different stuff. So it's really, really fun to explore every corner of that world. And of course, a lot of it is for girls, but not all of it is. So <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And like, if you haven't, because I, I actually don't know why listeners that you wouldn't have checked out these episodes. But like we said earlier, we have been on Sparkle Side Chats. So please check out the Phantom Thief John episode that I did with Ayu, along with the uh, Card Captor Sakura Clear Card episode that Gianna did with Ayu as well. Yeah, it was great to have both of you on. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I think about that cliffhanger like every so often. I should probably yes. message you every time I think about it because it's more often than you would think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. I am. Um, I have to read more of uh, Card Cap for Sakura for sure. But um, yeah, looking forward to whenever they bother to actually let us know what is going on with the the sequel because we know yeah. it's happening, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know that you already spoke about the fact that you like female protagonists. So you tend to go, um, or at least you look out for shoujo and jose content. But could you, I guess, elaborate more about why you love both demographics? Sure. I mean, uh, as a as a Japanese girl or Japanese woman, I have always been, you know, in those demographics, I suppose. So uh, yeah, growing up, it was just like a it, it was just kind of like a given that those would be the things that I would be shown, like even when I wasn't necessarily choosing my own media. It, you know, it's, I think part of why it's so popular internationally is that a lot of other countries don't do this with their media at all, um, which, mm. you know, has a lot of uh, its own 
issues, I think especially in the States, but like, you know, in other places as well. So it's it just this thing where it's like, well, I know that if I go to this demographic, I won't be disappointed by a lot of the characterizations of women and girls because like this this is what uh, we are the target. So it's for us to consume. It's for us to, you know, resonate with, you know, and I just like never really liked shows that were targeted for boys when I was a kid or like for kids, I guess. For example, Cardcaptor Sakura, when it came out in the States, because I was living in the States by the time that happened, uh, it was marketed as a show for boys and girls. And so for that reason, I never watched it as a kid because I was like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So it's it's like this thing where I just like I never really necessarily noticed that that's what I was doing as a kid until like I got older, that I was just always gravitating towards series about girls, series specifically about Japanese girls. And hey, that's like, you know, in Japan, that's where you're going to find the most of those. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think just being able to find that representation is so important because it's like I can watch the boy shows. But honestly, like when you're young, you just kind of think like, what about me? Like, mm -hmm. how do I fit into this frame? Being able to have access to this type of representation, I would say that at least I won't speak for Gianna, but I'm a little envious of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had to eventually, I mean, I, I mean, of course I did find more, but it's okay. Like you have an idea of where to look versus, well, you know what? I guess this is just, this is just what it is. Like, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay our last question that we have before we get into this review is what are your overall feelings about a sign of affection no spoilers because we are just doing the first three <laughs> right yes. so. yeah of course of course so i think i first heard about a sign of affection uh i think on the english speaking side actually i remember seeing people talk about the translation as it was coming out and how it was so exciting to see like representation of a deaf character in in any story, right? Because like it's not just a shoujo mm -hmm. thing; it's it's all over. There's definitely a, a lack of it. And I remember thinking it was interesting, but like I was super busy, and and even now I like don't necessarily always have as much time as I would like to read comics, but. Um, after they announced that there was going to be an animated series, I was like very eager to check it out. So I started reading it right away. I, I just loved it immediately. Like every single time I had the time to to read a chapter, I would just be like blushing and giggling like a little schoolgirl, you know, even though I'm like, an older woman who's like fully married. I was like, oh, this is so good. It's interesting because I've been checking a lot of reviews of the series in Japan. And I would particularly like focus on finding the, you know, whenever there were negative reviews, it was always interesting to read those. And I found that a lot of the negative reviews were mostly like that, oh, this series has like no serious conflict, right? It was like, just like <sighs> too pure, too nice. And it was like, no, but that's why I like it. Like, I, it's, right. it's a it's a nice little like bomb compared to like all these other like, not to like, dig, I, I mean, there's definitely, you know, room for the messy romances, right? I, I There is definitely an audience for that. But um, I think it's just so nice that it's just like so straightforward and like just so like, yeah, this is this is nice. <laughs> I think there's space for all kinds of different shows. Like, you know, you just have to be in the right mood for it. So mm -hmm. maybe if I want melodrama, then I'm going to go for like Boys Over Flowers or <laughs> uh, if I want to feel like so much angst then I'll go for like Rosa Versailles but honestly just being able to see like these two people come together and it's not like this there's like this huge death defying conflict I <laughs> I also enjoy that oh definitely yeah there's just something so sweet about like every frame of this show that just like relaxes you in a way yeah yeah I think they did such a good job of the ab adaptation. I'm really, really happy that it turned out so good. <laughs> it's so, like, and now it's going to be, that was in one of my Floats Your Boat. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It is so nice. And, like, you just get to see, and this isn't to say that there haven't been other shoujo 
or Jose adaptations that had really great animation, but you see like all of the budget really end up going to like these bigger shonen shows like like One Piece and like the way that they're adapting the Wano arc if they're not out of that yet now or free run they're talking about how great the animation and this it's like okay a sign of affection animation like what they're able to accomplish it's up there Mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely yeah let's get into episode one or sign one i noticed that that was actually so cute (laughs) (laughs) yeah so episode one sign one yuki's world here is our shorts because that's how it's gonna just be for this series y'all this is our short soft serve summary yuki who was born in a world where sounds don't sound like anything runs into the enigmatic itsuomi and immediately takes an interest in him I I mean, usually, quite usually, we do have lengthy summaries because y'all like to tell us everything that's going on in this episode. <laughs> this is not the case for A Sign of Affection, but I feel like so many people love this series that you already know what's going on. So just catch up with us, I guess, as we're going through the motions, sort of. But in any case, so let's get into theme. Ayu, do you have a theme for this episode? Yes, actually, kind of related to the actual uh, title. I thought the theme was uh, take a look into the world of a young deaf college student as she takes a chance on love. Oh, very beautiful. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gianna, what's your theme? All right. Much less eloquently put, I put, <laughs> you miss every shot you don't take. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. So true. I see it. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. What do you have? Be courageous and go after what you want. You can be pleasantly surprised by the outcome. Oh, I love that. (laughs) I try. Like, listen, it's not it's not hidden like IU. (laughs) Yeah, same. Well, my my idea of the theme was like, you know, the you know, this is definitely, you know, again there is really not a lot of representation of deaf characters in media in general, Mm. not just Japanese media. So a lot of what was happening in this first episode, and of course, it's still very similar to the comic. Like, it's like, even if uh, some people don't watch the rest of the series, they still got so much of like what daily life is like for this character who just so happens to be deaf that I thought it was just yeah. like really, really nice that they were able to fit all that in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like just being able to see what her world is like and how she interacts with it. And on top of it, it's like because it's her life, she's not making it out to be a novelty. Mm-hmm. This is just her day to day. And she's still like optimistic and she still has her friends and all of that. Like she, it's not different. I mean, it's different in the way, of course, because she's deaf and but like that doesn't mean that she's not able to have a normal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move into Sprinkle on Top. So I did look up the opening and ending song of A Sign of Affection. So the opening song is called Yuki no Oto by Novel Bright, and it basically discusses and I mean you can correct me if I'm wrong Ayu but I think it basically discusses like how to convey love to a partner and searching for a way to express things so that like the couple involved would understand how much they love each other how great that love is Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I would say so. And I should point out the the title uh, means the sound of snow, and but it could also oh. be Yuki's sound, right? There, yeah. they had oh. a lot of fun oh. with the. Uh, there's there's a lot of wordplay uh, with Yuki in this show. I <laughs> love it. I love it I love so it. much. This is the kind of stuff I eat right up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really nice song too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I should point out, it's not it's not like a really big thing, but, um, you know, this series, obviously, uh, being a, a series featuring a deaf character, I did try to look into, like, how accessible it was to deaf people in Japan. And um, the there was kind of limited accessibility with the subtitled version of the show. But if you do get it with subtitles, they do add subtitles 
uh, for the song. Like they put the song lyrics in the opening. Oh, oh, that's good. I love that. Yeah, because there is, you know, one thing about the series, and you know, we talked about how gorgeous the animation is already. But you know, there's a, mm. obviously a lot of use of sign language, and the sign language they use in the opening doesn't necessarily match the lyrics that they're seeing. So I think that was Ooh. probably intentional. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I really love that now. I really love that. So mm-hmm. it's like something very specifically like for them to. Oh, uh, that's great. The ending song is Snow Spring by Cho Q May. And this song discusses how you can go from not knowing a person to being deeply in love with them. So I just feel like this is another case of like the songs bookending each other because it's like Mm -hmm. Yuki's perspective and then Itsuomi's perspective. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Yeah, I could see that. What are some sprinkle on top that you guys have? I don't have any, unfortunately. Yeah, I I didn't notice any particular um, symbolism for this episode. Okay, um, the only extra one I have outside of the opening and ending is just that Yuki's name... As we, as Ayu has noted, it means snow. Oh, right. Yeah. And so it's said like different times in this episode. Oh, she compares like love to snow falling, which is nice because then it's just like, oh, yes, yeah, snow falling, Yuki falling in love. Here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah. Okay. Let's move into floats your boat to our likes. Um, Ayu, can you kick it off? Um, so kind of related to what we were talking about with the animation, I just wanted to give a major shout out in general, obviously not just this episode, to the sound design in the show, because mm. um, they do a really great job of like kind of going in and out. There's a lot of use of like just scenes where there's no sound to kind of like mimic Yuki's experience. But uh, there's just this very mesmerizing, extremely surreal quality to like a lot of the stuff that we see just like throughout the series so like there's stuff where it's like yeah if uh you know even if you can't uh hear you can still enjoy the series of course but there is just a lot of i feel like for for us to enjoy um to really again put us into her world yeah that, that's something i noticed as well like um when we first meet her and then she's on the train like you get to see the people talking to one another mm-hmm. and then the sound just drastically shifts and it moves to yuki yes and you're just like oh okay i i'm getting her experience and it's just great like i love how they are able to bring us in that way so we could sort of feel what she feels in a sense yeah right yeah yeah and then my yeah. other comment is just Dean is such a good friend. I love her so much. <laughs> right? Oh my god, I love her. I want to be her friend so bad. <laughs> yes, Wing Woman Ren. Yes. Yeah, like, I wrote that yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Okay. Yeah, I'm like she's such a like good like Wing Woman. You know, mm-hmm. twinning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gianna, what is one of your likes? So my first floats your boat was the very second the show started with that beautiful poetic thought from Yuki about is love like the snow? Will it arrive silently with no fanfare? Will it fall from the cloudy sky above covering the world in its hue? I don't know if it's a perfect like I I don't know if I wrote it perfectly because I was just kind of like writing it after the fact I didn't pause it. But I'm like, wow, what a beautiful note to open this show on. I just really like the poetic nature of a lot of Yuki's thoughts and yeah. even like some of like the dialogue and stuff. This is a very poetic show and that is very much up my alley. So it <laughs> really captivated me from the start. Same. Totally. I felt the exact same way. I was just like, oh, oh, gosh. You know, yeah. like the way that she thinks she just makes the world feel so beautiful and how she expresses it, mm. even oh, if yeah. it's just to herself. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Like, she's so um, poetic. She's, she's just like, her observations are so interesting. And again, like, they they reflect, like, you know, obviously, not just not just us hearing people watching the show, but like, in general, you know, they really, it really opens up, uh, 
you're thinking, I think. It makes me see so much that I like this helps enhance that idea of like paying attention to the little things mm. or finding joy mm. in the little things. Mm -hmm. Totally. Just by how she talks about like everyday life and stuff. Uh, one of the likes that I have besides Rin being amazing <laughs> and also like the sound design is when we do meet Itsuomi, I love that he made this effort to still communicate with Yuki, even though he knew that she was deaf. So he made sure to like slow down what he was saying so that she could understand what he was talking about. I don't know. I just really like appreciate that because like sometimes you'll see people who have like disabilities and then rather than treating them as if they're still people it's like you can see people othering them mm. and mm -hmm. so him just being open to like still communicate and talk with her was great yeah yeah i think i was i actually wrote this uh later on but like the idea that like you know imagining a scenario in which they never meet after this like it it wouldn't have mm. mattered cuz like he still like made that effort it wasn't about like trying to get to know this girl so that he could meet her later it was just like oh yeah like this girl needs to be communicated with and so i don't know how to do that so i have to like immediately shift to make sure that i am being able to i that i am able to communicate with her if that makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah no like to make sure that he's able to communicate with her but then also in a way that she can still understand, mm -hmm. you know. Also, head pats. <laughs> I know, Chica. I, I thought about Chica so much. She's such a head pat girl. So every yes. time Itsuomi gave Yuki a little head pat, I'm like, Chica must be like rolling in her seat right now. <laughs> yes, I had it in all caps. I was just like, head pat. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's kismet. It's for me. Yes. Yes. Chica <laughs> okay. is the target audience of this show. <laughs> yes. Ayu, do you have more likes? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm good there. Okay. Gianna, what are some of yours? Getting into, like, I guess, specifics, the girly chatter about boys between Yuki and Rin, and Rin's, like, helping... Yuki figure out that she does have a crush on Itsuomi. I I really, really liked the girly girl, like, back and forth, like, gossipy, like, positive gossipy nature yeah. of the conversation. And Yuki's, like, encouraging Rin by saying that she's a great girl and to have faith in herself because Rin's opening up about her crush on Kyoya, who is Itsuomi's boss, which <laughs> her nerves around Kyoya are also just extremely endearing. So just, like, all of that, like, crush energy and, like, girls helping each other out was just so sweet to see. Like, just a nice bomb to my soul. Like, sisterhood. Yes. 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 It's she's so so again so supportive of Yuki. It's very cute. And I love her her like the the difference between her being so supportive of Yuki and like the way that she fumbles so much when she's around Kyoya is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yes. it's so fun. Cause like Rin comes off as so confident and sure of herself mm. up until she sees Kyoya and then she is a little it's like a blushing mess but yes. an affectionate blushing mess <laughs> oh yeah definitely yeah this is very small very very small but i noticed it of course so when we get to see itsomi and kyoya at the bar they kind of pan to like show like okay you know there's all these drinks in the background but then they have a mini tv and they're watching some film that has black people in it so shout out to y'all because it was not offensive well you know that is actually a specific movie <laughs> they're watching bad is it boys men too in black? <laughs> oh my, my my bad my bad oh um, so you know they wear suits yeah, um, they, so, like, the, it, and they, this is also something, it's in the comic as well, but, like, um, they, mm. they are definitely, like, specifically watching Bad Boys. I'm pretty sure it's Bad Boys 2, which was, like, both of those movies are very big in Japan, but um, mm. that scene is actually very interesting because it's one of those things that is in the background, so Yuki doesn't actually make a note of it, but it's kind of an important uh, little thing because 
they're watching it's it's on TV. This is you know probably something that's being aired, you know, around the the country, and it's a mm. dubbed f- film with no subtitles, which means that if you're a deaf, you cannot watch the movie. Um, it, oh, yeah, yeah, right, because like like she couldn't be able to like read it and stuff. Exactly. So it's like a very mm. small detail, but it is, yeah, it's definitely that. Because like one of the voices, I happen to have watched Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2 with the Japanese dub, and it sounded like the voice actor that they use for Will Smith in Japanese. <laughs> so I was pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Nice. No, I, I think that's a great touch. It's a great touch. I do wish that it had subtitles so, you know, Yuki would be able to understand. But right. I will just say, like, for me, I was like, oh, like... You know, Will Smith does not look crazy. Like, this is great. Like, I love this. <laughs> Will yeah. Smith is a treasure in Japan. We love him here. It's it's very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also like that Itsuomi gave Yuki a dry erase board so that they could continue to talk with one another. Oh, yeah. That was very nice. I like that when they're leaving the bar that Rin kind of finesses it so that Itsuomi has to walk Yuki home again wing (laughs) woman of the century I'm like I love her so much (laughs) wing woman energy let's go I love it (laughs) she's a great friend (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah and then they end up holding hands (gasps) oh I had to write down the poetic quote because it like took my breath away Yuki thinks to herself my fingertips were numb from the cold, wintry air, and now they're burning up. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. I love the poetry in this show. Me too. Me too. It was just uh, like, oh, I love it. And I mean, there's another point that's in this scene. I have it in nuts, though. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was like, it was more because... Not that it was like, oh, crazy, but I think my response to it was crazy because I was just screaming. <laughs> oh, um, I wonder if it's my next plus your boat. <laughs> it's probably, it probably is. <laughs> I had, I did write it in all caps, so it is definitely low key nuts. So I see what you mean. I put bold mm. Yuki asking for his contact info <laughs> and then his response. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, yes. His response. Yes. yes Let me yes, in your yeah. world. Oh, oh, oh. geez. Like, stop my heart why don't you (laughs) like i felt like one of those announcers like you know when they're doing soccer and they're just like go like i felt just like that i was like let's fucking go he's so smooth it's it's a while because this you know again very close adaptation so this does you know is a line in the comic as well i remember reading it in the comic and again blushing like a little schoolgirl, watching it the first time when it aired and being like oh my god and then like re-watching it I was like yeah I feel the same this is so wild like the Riz is, is wild it's at, out of this world it's so good <laughs> yeah like- <laughs> out of this world <laughs> yes okay the Riz the charisma it was going it was going I was here for I was just like okay yes okay yes. we're in this moment yes yeah, but I was just glad she got his number. And it was very cute to just see that frame of them texting each other, but then still being sort of nearby. Mm-hmm. But, whoo. And her reaction to it was my reaction. Like, well, I mean, I was a little <laughs> bit more um, loud. But still, well, no, oh, that's, listen, I didn't mean it like that. I meant I didn't, to say. I didn't interpret it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that you I meant to say I was like so I was I was very embarrassing versus like she was just so cute about it and you know I was just like oh yeah yeah like (laughs) come on yeah yeah they're so they're both so adorable and so great in that scene like her her way of just like this giant yes in the slow motion it's just like the silliest little thing but it's obviously so meaningful for both of them it's so nice (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. yes and oh I also like that he aside but that he did ask her like how to sign sure thing and stuff i thought Mm -hmm. that was nice yeah definitely yeah it's so nice (laughs) yeah it actually it did remind me a tiny bit of my own relationship because uh my (laughs) yeah we're listening (laughs) yes i um I can go into uh, I have I have a a Twitter thread detailing all the ways in which my relationship that led to my marriage 
is something out of a shoujo manga. But um, in particular, like as we had gone from friends to best friends, and I was still holding on to this crush, um, they had uh, we we went out for dinner one night, and they asked me because you know they are Japanese. They asked me how to ask me out in English, and then asked me out in English. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was That's very, so sweet. Yeah. So it did remind me of that a lot. Like, oh, this, you know, the the immediate efforts to want to communicate in the in the best way. Um, it's just really nice. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Nothing says I care about you quite like wanting to learn something new for that person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. When will it be our turn? Gia? I know. <laughs> Hopefully by the time this comes. <laughs> Oh God, that's that's fast for me. Well, but, you, uh, you girls doing her best over here, <laughs> right? Uh, but let's move into banana split. So this is kind of anything, I guess, that we had a question about. What might have confused us if we didn't really have a place to put a scene or an idea. Uh, this is what it's for. Um, mm. Ayu, do you have any banana split? Well, uh, so you actually already kind of mentioned it before, but the fact uh, that, you know, Itsomi starts like pretty much right away, even fr- from their first meeting, like patting or grabbing Yuki's head. Now, we do mm. come to learn that this like does have, you know, its own significance in sign language and everything, but... Um, I, I definitely was unsure about it at first, um, especially because the first mm. time he's doing it as he's leaving the train and he says something when she couldn't possibly see. Um, uh, and then, you know, like, uh, yeah, just like that kind of whole thing. Just it's, um, it like, you know, he is a very forward person, right? And that is kind of part of his yeah. worldliness, but. Um, it did also feel like, well, even if, you know, you know, I guess because he doesn't know the extra significance of that action, like for, for her, um, you know, it just felt like a kind of, for me, it's like, this is very potentially like an invasion of personal space. And while she is True. okay with it, for me, I was just like, mm, I wouldn't jump to doing that right away, guy. Um, <laughs> that's like the only thing, right. like, for the most part, I think, you know, obviously, I'm so on board for this relationship and everything. But like those few moments that happen now and then where he is like, kind of saying something, but not actually communicating to her that does always like kind of rub me the wrong way and um true Mm -hmm. i heard a lot like when i was checking out other like reviews and opinions here in japan uh, i saw this kind of opinion a lot of like early on a lot of people not trusting izomi because of stuff like this yeah Mm. no i would get that i mean i do like head pats but i kind of would understand why because you know you should have consent before you start touching someone And so, like, just because, I mean, I know at that point he knew that he was at least friends with one of her friends. So there's a slight, maybe a slighter bit more familiarity, um, but that doesn't give him the right to touch her. Yeah, I strongly agree. I feel the exact same way about it. It has extra meaning for her. But then at the same time, if we take if we aren't thinking about that meeting and they're not and we're not thinking about chica likes head pats or whatever (laughs) like somebody patting your head and you don't really know them it kind of comes off as if they see you like a kid because you really don't see Mm -hmm. head pats in like when you see head pats at least in the states it's more attributed to like oh good luck kid or like (laughs) to children yes Mm -hmm. versus adults totally yeah, exactly. So that's that's why it bothered me mostly. It was just like the the kind of you know kind of immediate comfort with that kind. I don't, I don't know. It and it also I I do think that like maybe it is intentional in that like uh, Yuki doesn't know um at first like how you know he feels about her if it's like just friendship or something more right. It's it's it, even if it seems clear for us the reader or the viewer like it's still for her mm-hmm. very unsure. So like that kind of action could be really ambiguous. And she knows that he doesn't know what it means in like sign language in a way. Yeah. Right. Until it's communicated later. So right now it's just some guy touching her head when he wants to. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and you can kind of see 
well, that's in a different episode of like how she rationalizes things mm-hmm. because she's like, I don't want to assume anything, even though it might make her blush and stuff. But we'll we'll get to that point. One of the banana splits that I had, um, I mean, at that moment of watching it, of watching this first episode was, you know, I have to see more of the anime, but it looks like Yuki accommodates the people in her life by writing out her communication instead of having them learn JSL for her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really, I mean, I feel a different way in later episodes, but so far, or at least within this episode, I was just kind of like, hmm, I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, because I think at that time I was just more so like, you know, maybe somebody else will try like signing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. For sure. I, I think that is also part of like, that's her feelings on it, her opinion compared to, mm. you know, other other folks. Um, I'm sure I'm sure other deaf people would have, uh, you know, different opinions on the topic, etc. So, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. But, you know, as we get to know her, I think it, it becomes clear why it makes sense for her. Right. Um, Gianna, do you have any banana split? I just have one. I just, I don't know if I like missed something when I was making a note, but um, instead of like going inside, because I, I didn't even know if like they had reached Yuki's like house when they exchanged information and then they're just like standing back to back, like 10 feet apart in the snow texting. I'm like, why don't you like wait <laughs> so you're like in a warm house <laughs> and you're not standing out in the snow to text each other like I love that you're having this exchange and I'm here for the exchange but why is it happening this way is my question <laughs> right well mm. it's 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 love's first blush yeah that's true that's true yeah you don't want so to leave like, right there's that for right. sure yeah but were they was she like outside her house or were they just like in the middle of the road that's why i was like uh, confused well, they were like because um she had said that like, i think she was near a station yeah she was she was near, okay. they were near the station so she would be able to get home that way um so she, that was why he, they were splitting but like yeah i think i think that was all just like you know they're they're on their way elsewhere but like they don't actually want to say goodbye just yet of course mm. and um, i love a prolonged goodbye <laughs> guys guys, i'm also like so deep into like editing and writing my own like romance novel right now so Mm -hmm. all this shit is just like screaming to me i love it so much i love that for you yes (laughs) thank you (laughs) um before we leave bananas play i do have one last one before we can go into um rocky road so uh, the last banana split i have is about the foreign foreigner woman that ends up kissing Itsomi's cheek mm-hmm. okay. in the bar. I don't know. I guess if a foreigner that you've never met kisses your face, that might not be normal. Like, I know people, there are people that greet that way, but it's never really like a direct to your face type of thing. It's sort of like they make the sound by mm-hmm. both cheeks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I just I just felt like putting that because like I didn't. I mean, clearly, you know, most people that are listening to us are in the states and everything. But it's just <laughs> kind of like uh, people kissing your face. I don't feel like that's the usual thing if you don't know them for real. Well, but I think that they do know him because they all know his name and they're like talking kind of casually about stuff like we don't hear a lot of the conversation um but it it is like i thought it was clear to me that uh they they know him if that makes sense okay yeah okay yeah because i was because one of the people like one of the guys was the guy that they helped at the beginning of the episode Mm -hmm. like um on the train and stuff so that's why like um or at least to me, maybe the other people knew him and then the, that person on the train was just like a new addition or something. Yeah, apparently everyone's going to Rock and Robin, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They, they've they got to go. They got to get their drinks there and see Itsuomi's cool tattoo. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Um, but OK, let's move into Rocky Road. Um, that's our, I guess, 
scenes that made us emotional. Gianna, would you start if you have any? I actually don't have anything until I scream, you scream. So I'm just here to chime in. (laughs) Oh, okay. Ayu, do you have any Rocky Road? Well, I do. I think we've already kind of talked about it in Floats Your Boat, but like, the again, the fact that Itsomi like immediately makes his efforts to be uh, understood by Yuki on the train and, you know, in mm. their further conversations. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing you said that it was a, I want to be in your world is how they translated it, right? Like that is, yeah. yeah, that part like makes me so emotional, like just that, you know, especially like the symbolism you know, throughout their relationship of like the the smallness and the largeness of the world, because right, you know, as as we learn more in like the next episode, you know, Yuki's world has been so small for her whole life, and mm-hmm. um, Itsumi is like the complete opposite. You know, obviously he hasn't been everywhere in the whole world, but compared to Yuki, he's been into so much more. You know, of the world, and so like that is that is also part of her fascination with him is like how how much access to the world he has had compared to her. And so for him to say that, it's like, oh, but she also has her own world that he also wants to be part of. And that's just like so sweet. Yeah, just like, that is, that's so so, beautiful. They're so cute. (laughs) Mm -hmm. They are so cute. Yeah. I also had that, or I, I had it, but it was just more so just her reaction to him saying that to her. Like you could just, she was beaming Mm -hmm. and that brought me so much joy to just see how happy she was another rocky road point that i have it was kind of it's kind of sadder um but it was at the bar when the foreigners come in and so yuki's kind of observing it's me and basically everyone else because at that point rin was talking to kyoya and i thought it was a really great depiction of being surrounded by a group of people but being alone at the same time Mm. oh right yeah yeah and that is definitely her world a lot of the time as she goes out and about yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but that's all i had for rocky road i don't have hot fudge me neither me neither (laughs) okay cool um, and I already said nuts was for me was let me in your world. Um, <laughs> so does anybody have nuts points? I don't. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Then let's move into ice cream. You scream. Does anyone have? I don't even have ice cream. You scream. Does anyone have ice cream? You scream. I have two. Okay. I have one. Yeah. Okay. So. I gotta be honest, when Itsuomi first meets Yuki on the train and he says, I've never met someone like you before, I just felt like that came off a little rude. I don't know that that's really something you should say to someone you meet with a disability. Mm -hmm. Um, So that just rubbed me the wrong way. And then the other thing we already touched on, I just wrote out this specifically, When Itsuomi lifts Yuki's head for her to look at him rather than getting her attention a different way at Rock and Robin, that made me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just didn't like Uh that sudden, like, demanding kind of touch, even if he didn't mean it that way. Right. It was, like, aggressive, even though he wasn't trying to be. But yeah, it just made me feel really uncomfortable. Totally, totally. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like in, that's like the thing, same thing with um there's the 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 time in in Rock and Robin where he just like puts his whole hand on her head to get her attention yes. instead of I don't know tapping her shoulder like Rin does, I don't know. Right. Yeah. It, it just Or even like yeah. the counter in front of her without even touching her, just like something to garner her attention. Exactly. But one thing I do think is that like he seems to make some mistakes in this episode and I do think that he does improve. As he kind of like yeah. learns more as well. So, you know, he's not a perfect guy, but um, he is definitely open to learning, which is all you can ask for. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But that's all I had. My only thing is, um, I can never remember his name, but uh, we do see Itsuomi in this episode, even though we don't spend a lot of time with him or anything. And um, we also meet his friend who has those weird lips. And it's just, I don't like that character design. So I just, it's like... Why is because the whole oh. series is so beautiful, 
all the time and like all these things and then you have like this one guy that has those like weird kind of bubble lips and it's like it looks so out of place and yeah it just i don't understand why and it's something from the comic as well but it's just like why did why did was this necessary um so yeah just my my little thing he's not like an important character or anything but we do see him and he's even the opening and stuff so just hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. It kind of reminds me of um what is it called? I haven't I haven't watched or read it. I do plan on do- reading it. Like my love story, like the main lead in that. Mhm. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like the lip design, yeah. Which I'm sure like we'll come to love eventually when eventually get to That is no promises, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I know that for me, that's going to take some getting used to is just why are the lips like that? But Mm -hmm. agreed. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I think I think the ones in that series are slightly better than what we have here, which is like the full like kind of tube effect that, you know, it is it does have like, you know, racist origins like this is a a, an art an, an animation visual that we picked up from Western animation from stereotypes of black characters and then just put them on Japanese characters instead. So it, it's, it's a whole, it's, it's, that's a whole separate like podcast topic, mm. but you know, uh, it is, right. yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, this theory, this series does still have its issues um, despite everything <laughs> as much as I want mm-hmm. to love it completely. Right. No, I get it. I think, um, I would have been so much more offended. Maybe that's the way that they they played me well. <laughs> and that <laughs> when they had Will Smith on the screen, he didn't look like that. And so it was like, oh, I am not mad. I did think the foreigner looked weird, but I was just like, it's not on Will. So I don't know if I can fully get upset, but <laughs> it's not that I liked it on the foreigner either. So it was right. just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally. but- Okay. Um I think that since that's it for episode 1. Okay, let's get into episode 2, sign 2, 2, affection. Yuki tries to come to terms with her newfound feelings for Itsuomi, while Oishi Ashioka offers a glimpse into what he's been trying to come to terms with for a long time. These summaries are so vague. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, they are really just not giving anything away, but it's fine. It reminds me of, for all of our whipped cream patrons, the summaries for Hani Uridango, Boys Over Flowers, the live action we're doing for Licorice Live Action. (laughs) Yeah, the one sentence. (laughs) It's like one sentence and it's just like, no terror happened in this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Crimes happened in this episode. (laughs) Yeah. But not this episode of not this A Sign one. of Affection. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into themes. Gianna, what's one of your theme? What well, one? What's your theme for this episode? Yeah, I just have one theme and it's defining love looks different for everyone. Mm, true. Yeah. That's very deep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different. Everybody has a different experience with love and what defining that means for them individually. Right, right. Like, y'all might have to sit with that. I almost sat with that while we were recording. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, so, Ayu, what is your theme? Um, Mine's actually very similar. Uh, I wrote, it's okay to define for yourself what your feelings are. And it's also okay to not know right away. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Y'all are doing deep cuts. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. What do you have? Mine is so basic. I said making an effort will always count. It will, though. Yeah, that's, it that's will, also true. It is so valid. It's true. It's like y'all are giving deep cuts and I'm like, Neosporin. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It all goes together. It's true. It's true. Any sprinkle on top for this episode? Kind of? One? Okay. Sort of? It's probably a stretch and again i don't think i wrote this quote out word for word but i I could have gone back i just didn't want to i'm sorry so i just (laughs) wrote this quote out i guess um paraphrase the more i think about itsuomi the more this powdery white substance builds up in my heart so it's more of that snowfall 
of love imagery continuing from the first episode. Mm -hmm. So I just love that we got more of that, like, poetic, snowy imagery. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's very nice. Yeah. Ayu, do you have any sprinkle on top? Um, no, I didn't really come up with any sort of uh, particular symbolism. <laughs> for this okay, one. okay. No, same. I didn't have any either. So let's move into Floats Your Boat. Yuki rereading that message from Itsuomi. <laughs> She's just like us for real. Yes. Oh, she <laughs> is. Yeah, that is so yes. me. Like, me re-listening to voice memos. Mm-hmm. Like... <laughs> Kicking my feet. Like, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> very, very real. Right? Very real. Wish I could be part of your world. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Ayu, what is one of your floats your boat? Well, kind of similar to that about like their their texting and everything. You know, Isomi does go away in this episode, but he is so quick to mm-hmm. share his world with Yuki. You know, sending all the pictures and things. Yeah, you know, that is is so oh. nice. <laughs> oh my god, I love that so much. It says so much that someone will continue to contact you even when they're like on a trip or away, mm-hmm. like when they're like busy trying to cram as much stuff in as they can in their schedule like they're really thinking about you if they're doing that and all the pictures he was sending incredible (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. that reminded me of me except it was not in a romantic sense i was like talking to my parents this was actually when i went to i went to japan in 27 yeah 2017 i think every couple days i would call them and i would just be like okay it's late for me but it's early for them but they're they've always been early risers so they're just like how are things and i'm like yeah it's great look at my pictures it's so cool. I don't want to come home. <laughs> Send my shit over here. <laughs> it's um, like I've got a job interview tomorrow. <laughs> right? Like, y'all never see me again. I'm not the singer Gianna is. Oh. But, um, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, clearly, I came back home. <laughs> I had a great time, but still, it's like if you if people wanted to, they would. So it's like yes. if I want to communicate with you, and I'm in another country, I'm gonna do that, and I like that about Itsumi. Yeah, totally, totally. Like it's it's really nice to know that, like, yeah, again, that he is thinking of her, and is just like, yeah, of course, I'm gonna, you know, take all these pictures. I'm sure, of course, he's sending them to his other friends and things, but it's just like, yeah, this right. girl that he just met, he's just like really still thinking about her. So you know, it's mm-hmm. just it's just so sweet to, yeah, 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 just to see it, yeah, Gianna. Okay, the first thing I have is just another point about Rin being a spectacular wing woman. <laughs> mm-hmm. She has Yuki come and meet her at a specific place because that's where their cultural exchange club usually meets. So Itsuomi would be nearby. And she even goes the extra mile to wave down Itsuomi when he almost leaves before noticing Yuki just to make sure she gets the opportunity to talk to him. Yes. Yes. And I love it, too, because I was just like, this, this is the time to use your speaking privilege, okay? Because Yuki might not see it. Well, she didn't see it at first. But it's like, I'm going to wing woman no matter what. I'm calling this man. He's going <laughs> yeah. to turn around and see her. Very beautiful. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Yes, yes. She is the, the number one uh, shipper of, uh, <laughs> of Yuki and Itsomi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I liked the fact that she asked him to give her a souvenir because me again, like you're going out and you're telling me about it. Okay, at least bring me back a magnet, you know, like (laughs) it it was really nice of him to offer to bring her something back. Like, that's so sweet. Yeah, especially like so, you know, I think it's such a big thing uh in japan that when you go somewhere even if somewhere else in japan like that you would bring stuff for for folks in your life there, it, it can be mm. a lot of pressure <laughs> sometimes it's like oh the last part of your trip is just like doing a whole bunch of shopping for other people but 
Yeah, I like, you know, the fact that he would ask her, you know, like, and, and also just made an option, like, do you want one? Do you not want one? You know, I thought that was really nice because that's showing that, like, oh, yeah, he is considering her, like, close enough that she would deserve one, you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a specific note about the art in one frame. Okay. I believe it's when Rin is talking to Yuki about, like... I don't know, I think you might be in love with him. And she says something like, you were glowing. Mm. And that statement hits Yuki in such a way that the frame and like the, the art style kind of shifts in a way. And suddenly there's this like watercolor emanating from her core mm. as she thinks about love and how she was glowing at his words. I just mm. thought that was absolutely gorgeous. Like what a beautiful depiction of like that spark like in your chest when you have a strong feeling like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I wanted to just put my face in the screen. Like, I <laughs> want to experience a love like this. Yeah. Like, everything is Technicolor for real. Yes, yes. Yes, Hilary Duff said, yesterday my life was duller. Now everything is Technicolor <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lizzie McGuire. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I never watched Lizzie McGuire, but I know the theme song only because the singer for uh uh what's it called the uh, Sakura Kiss also did a cover. I think she sang the for the <gasps> Japanese version of uh, of uh, Lizzie McGuire. Oh my god! Wow. I need to look that up immediately. <laughs> yes, yes, you yes. have uh, Chiko Gianna? Kawabe, I believe. Yes, yes, Chiko Gia- yeah, yeah. Kawabe. She does. Yeah. She's she's great. She's also been in two different Sailor Moon things. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that girl, okay. Shows that your queen. Girl. Definitely. <laughs> Gianna sings Sakura Kiss like for real, for real at her job. So, <laughs> well, if if it gets requested, I when there's nobody in there, I will sing Sakura Kiss though, like <laughs> all the time. Uh, does anybody have any more likes? I just wanted to shout out all the the flashback scenes of like little baby Yuki seeing her grow yeah. up in her little her little school. Like you know, obviously it's it's mostly just to show how small her world was for so long. But it's mm-hmm. just like, oh, she's a baby. She's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I I thought the pink was natural, and so I was like, I? she looks cute either way. Like. Girl, Mm -hmm. she knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, that is a great color. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. As somebody who currently has pink hair, I strongly approve of dyeing your hair pink. Yeah, Yeah. that is one thing that I heard a lot as uh, as well from, like, in other reviews and and other podcasts and stuff in Japan is, like, a lot of people observing about the show in general. And I think it's also because you have a character like Shin on uh, as well. But, like, we we see the, um, yeah, the... Uh, just like the fact that like everyone's hair is dyed is such a fun little detail because everyone has chosen their current hair color. And mm. it also is part of like the interest of, um, you know, because Yuki means snow. So you might imagine in a series where people have naturally unnatural hair colors that her hair color might be something very different. But this is like this right. very kind of spring like pink and it's connected to, um, you know, what we later find out is her like interest in flowers and stuff so i think it's so uh nice to to kind of have that that interesting little uh grounding in reality with that detail yeah yeah dyeing your hair is like so fun like Mm -hmm. a million years ago not really a million probably like a decade ago i had the bi flag in my hair I love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had kept it. I mean, my hair is cut now, but it would have been nice if I just kept up with it. It is a lot of work to upkeep. Gianna. Yeah. You had more, right? Yes. The only time Oshi will be in Sloats Your Boat, I suppose, would be when he goes to direct um, a deaf person he sees at the train station to like mm. go back so that he's not accused for skipping out on fair Mm -hmm. because he couldn't hear the employee calling after him. You know, that was a good deed. So I will appreciate Oshi for that and only that. It's so true. (laughs) Right. Because like the when I was looking at it, I think his the person's hearing aids, they look a little different from Yuki's. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought, oh, 
this would have been a perfect plug. We don't have ads, but if we had like if we had an um, ad with Raycon, it looked like those like little earbuds that you just stick in. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. they were black. So I was just like, oh, like he just he's listening to music. Wait, oh yeah, okay, yeah. But yeah, good compartmentalizing of that. <laughs> yeah. of that se- that's the only t- probably the only time we'll ever have him in full <laughs> Yes. From what yes. I vaguely remember seeing on Twitter, even though I was trying to avoid every spoiler possible, um, people don't like this guy. And I already can see why. I don't so, like him either. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I don't, yeah, I certainly don't <laughs> like him. I know why. I understand why his character exists. But no, I, I can't stand him. Just uh, yes. Mm, yes. exhausted by his presence every time he shows up. The next thing I have is that Itsuomi learned how to say good morning in sign language so that he could greet her when he came yeah. back from his trip. That was so, so sweet. And the last thing that I have is the very cute way that Yuki tells Rin that she thinks she's in love with Itsuomi <laughs> is just to make a heart with her hands and blush so heavily. Oh, yes, she's yes. so cute. She is absolutely the precious. Cutest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ayu, what are your other floats your boat? Um, I think everything's been kind of covered. I wrote, yeah, Yuki is so cute and okay. wholesome. I love her so much. And Rina is so supportive. And yeah, I think I think we've covered everything. <laughs> cool. Let's move into Banana Split. Let's see. So I only have one. Okay. It is about Oshi. Okay. I literally just wrote in Banana Split, Oshi is bad vibes. <laughs> <laughs> right Be- the way okay like i didn't have hot fudge before but i have it this anyway mm-hmm. so but banana split Oshi is the first person that i see actively using sign language to communicate with yuki but he also makes it a point to note to his friend that she's deaf so that he doesn't have to invite her to like a boozer party and i don't Mm -hmm. yeah the the friend actually saying that that sounds like too much for me was something i put into ice cream you scream so i'm i'm right there with you yeah yeah it's it's like i Okay, so on the one hand, that's why it's banana split, because on the one hand, it's just like, well, considering that guy could say some shit like that, I wouldn't want Yuki hanging out with him to begin with. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it also felt as if Oshi was trying to limit her outside experiences. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because it's like, it's not really his choice like yeah it's his friend but he sh- could have given her the choice to say no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's why i have it in banana split so i was just like i f- i i can i get why but i also don't like it and yeah oh i just wanted to check so for both of you is this your first time watching the show Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you think you don't like Oshi now. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, I'm sure he's just going to get worse. I mean, we we can already see he's like progressing. Yes, yes. Um, They it's 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 going to get interesting. I I can't wait to to hear your thoughts. Um, (laughs) Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, definitely no spoilers. But yeah. Yeah, all my stuff for mm. all she's hot fudge and ice cream, ice cream. So I don't have anything else to say here. But I totally understand putting him in banana split because it's just like, yeah, he is the guy that has been her friend since childhood. Like he's like he is like her one, you know, hearing friend. And so obviously she cares about him and stuff. But he's always been kind of rude about it. So it's like this very confusing thing. I think even for her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have him in hot fudge and ice cream, ice cream too. It was just like, you know, I can compartmentalize and just be like, I kind of get why, but I also don't like how he handled that situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Gianna, do you have any banana split? I just have one other one. Um, okay. I didn't really flesh it out. I just think that... And it's why my theme is that defining love looks different for everybody. This, like, crush versus love logic that they're describing is very different from the way that I personally interpret falling into, like, actual love with someone. It sounds mm-hmm. like they're more equating it to, like, a heavy infatuation and, like, the what, – what's the chemical uh, – oxytocin that's or released? Serotonin? Uh, serotonin is just another happy chemical, yeah. 
um that's like released it's like the love chemical they call it or like the infatuation so like it just feels like they're equating like having a really really big crush on someone as like love and i think love is something that's so much deeper than that and that like that kind of crush and infatuation can certainly lead to falling in love um but i just don't agree that like oh i'm in love kind of thing like the way they're defining it it's just it's a personal thing Mm -hmm. so it's just like a in my opinion like in a rainbow with sparkles (laughs) in my opinion (laughs) i disagree yeah (laughs) no no um i see that because it's like i think that she does like him oh yeah i do too i but i do think it's quick to be like is it love i don't know but yeah. I like to. I would like to also find out with her. So right, right. Could it blossom into love, kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. all I have okay. for banana split. Okay. Um. Any rocky road? No. Okay. It's time for hot fudge. <laughs> Ayu, do you want to kick it off? <laughs> Look, I just put Oshi in all caps. In my nose, yeah. <laughs> just everything about him. Like, he's just so upsetting. Like, the way he talks, like, she, you know, she makes a note to mention when he, he is signing, he's so, like, rough and casual with her. And you can see that there's a difference between that and when he is uh, confronting that deaf stranger uh, at the train station, like, where he is, he's just, like, very matter of fact and clearly, I don't know about polite, I don't know how to measure politeness in sign language, but. It's definitely more clear and like focused, you know, the way he's signing compared to the way he signs with her. And, you know, obviously they also make it clear with like the the way that the voice actor speaks and stuff. But um, it's just like it's he's so frustrating because he acts like he owns her. And yeah, um, yeah. And you can see that in, in again, like how, yeah, he is quick to make sure that not even his own friends um, know who she is. By the way, I think I did say Itsomi's friend back in episode one, but I did mean Oshi's friend is the one with the character design I don't like. Um, But yes. Okay. Yeah. That probably makes more sense now. But uh, yes, I I think just, yeah, he is just like, it's like, how come all of his, his close friends don't know about Yugi? That's wild because they've known each other forever. Um, and Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, it is, he's definitely like, again, he's a character type. I understand like that, you know, the, 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 the long time, you know, guy who like clearly does have feelings and stuff, but doesn't know how to express them and whatever. I understand there are people who like this character type in fiction, et cetera, but like, I just am so tired of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. But no, it's not. Yeah, but it is not mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. No, but for me, the biggest thing is that he translated for her when she didn't ask. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's like I feel that Yuki's the type of person that she's just very respectable, and it's not a conversation that she's in, and she doesn't. And he like acts as if, oh, I know you wanted to know. How do you know that she wanted to know that? Right. She literally right. said, "I didn't ask you to do that." You know. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like he does this thing where he just he is actively trying to isolate her by saying all of this hateful stuff and making her question the people around her. So when she was talking about Ren, then he was just like, oh, like, isn't she supposed to help you? Like, as if that means as if that means that she's not really her friend, which is totally not the case. Like, they're very close, you know? Um, I just hate that he tries to, like, interrupt her peace like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But also at the same time, it's like the way that he treats her amongst his other friends is also similar to that ideology that he has, where he feels as if people with, with disabilities, like should be in safe places i have that Mm. yeah i was like what and not experience life because deaf people deserve as enriching a life as people who can hear as well Mm -hmm. yeah like i mean i think it's nice that yuki was able to go to a deaf school and see other people that are just like her Mm -hmm. and interact with them yeah that's awesome but at the same time her world was small and she 
her going to college made it bigger for her. Like, yeah, seeing different types of people being able to interact, you know. So to, for, to me, it was just he was being so nasty for no. I'm just like, if you don't get the fuck out of my <laughs> get out of my face. <laughs> because, yeah. And th- this is just the beginning. I'm sure I'm going to be raging in like further episodes. But yeah, I just don't I don't rock with him at all and like even him asking like why would she want to go to college why do you want to go to college right back at you <laughs> uno reverse card <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah hmm. yeah and so it just like i think it becomes more clear over time but like there's this idea of her that he has in his head that he has kept all mm. this time and yeah. she is going against that and he doesn't like it. And again, he's like, you know, I think, you know, again, it's normal to be a little, you know, uneasy about uh, a, someone you've been friends with for a long time suddenly going out with this guy who's so different, etc. But like his his jealousy is like, I mean, it's I think it's very clear at this point already that he likes Yuki, right? But he's just like so unable to communicate that. And here comes this guy who just shows up and is able to communicate with her fine and is like actively working to communicate with her. And he makes it like her problem that like he doesn't he can't handle that. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's giving, you know, this tired trope of, you know, if somebody makes fun of you, they actually like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so tired. Ugh. Like, spare me. Yeah. (laughs) Just, no. You do not, like, if he he likes the idea of her, like, and I've dealt with people like that, too, where it's like they just had a very specific idea of me, and it's just like, bro, do I need to give you my cover letter? Like, I am, I am not what you, I'm not who you think I am. I am much more than that. Let's Mm -hmm. move accordingly. Like, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's what I had for Hot Fudge. Um. Does anyone have any more? No, actually, we covered everything that I had remaining. So I'm just chilling till episode three. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Cool. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, let's move into episode three. All right. Episode three, sign three. Someone is thinking of someone. Here's our soft serve summary. Having come to terms with her feelings for Itsuomi, Yuki readies herself to confess when she sees something that confuses and worries her. Okay. Ayu, what is your theme for this episode? Well, you gave me such compliments for my first two, but I actually don't have one for this episode. (laughs) That is fine. That is fine. You have more than proved yourself. Yes. (laughs) Gianna, what is your theme if you have one? Okay, I also struggled with a theme, but I put maybe this episode is kind of centering around strengthening slash defining bonds with other people, because I feel like there was a lot of that going on. Right, yeah, yeah. I didn't have really that great of a theme either. I think this must, I know it came from, I don't know who it's from, but it's basically just put your best foot forward. Okay, yeah. Hmm. So I feel like that's just more towards Yuki of like, you can do it. Like, keep going. I surprisingly have Sprinkle on top. Does anyone else also have Sprinkle on top? I do. Uh, I don't. So okay. you can go ahead. <laughs> I'll just be here. Chika, you should start. What's yours? Um, Mine is the shoujo butterflies or the kaleidoscope of love. I could not like because it was very beautiful, right? Mm. So part of me when I was looking at like the scene, it looked like Yuki was surrounded by butterflies. But then I was also just like, oh, but the they're different color. So that's why I have both. So for me, I just felt like, oh, OK, like, you know, when you like someone, that's when you feel like the butterflies in your stomach and everything. Yeah. So I thought that that was just very like pretty and a nice touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So my sprinkles on top are when they're signing for the word promise. I, is that where like pinky promise originates from? Because then, because it looks like you like you wrap your pinkies around one another, and then 
instead of doing it himself, he kind of extends his pinky to her, and then she wraps hers around, and so it's like a pinky promise. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know Ooh. if that's kind of like where it originated from. I do not know. Um, and this is a very, very niche reference, but the music at the very beginning of the episode sounds so much like exactly like the melody of the song Just a Taste from Team Star Kids' Firebringer musical. Um, if I have the energy, I will post these side by side when the episode comes out so you can hear it in the episode and also from Firebringer. You've probably all seen a clip from Firebringer because that I don't really want to do the work today went viral on TikTok when mm. the musical came out or like a few years ago. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe share a clip of Just a Taste, which is like m- perhaps my favorite song from Firebringer, side by side with the music from the very beginning of the episode because they're extremely similar. I am certain it's coincidence, but, you know, just something I picked up on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Niche reference. <laughs> very cool. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> so I just did a very quick Google to kind of figure out if the pinky swear does come from Japan because I didn't I never thought it did like. I know that we use it in Japan too, but uh, apparently mm. it does actually um, most <gasps> wow. likely come from Japan. Um, so, and the the ASL for promise is a completely different um, sign, but but yeah, the idea of the the pinky promise. I mean, we don't have the word pinky in Japanese, obviously, but uh, you're doing that gesture because if you break the promise, then you'll break uh, you'll cut your finger, basically. Okay. Oh. Wow. You know, fingers have the consistency of carrots. Very random. <laughs> but okay. Thank you. Pretty I interesting le- fact. I learned the right, more you so know. It was intrusive thought. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but no, Pinky Promise? That feels like the title, Gianna. Mm. Oh, great. Now I don't have to think of a title when I'm editing this. Future Gianna will really appreciate that. <laughs> no, I, li- I like that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, let's move into Floats Your Boat. Yuki making a sign language guide for oh my Itsuomi. God. Girl. Rolling in my seat. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is, that is dedication. Yeah. That is heart. Like, went out that of her way. Oh, my god! Hours gosh. of work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that, like, we see her awkwardly trying to figure out how to illustrate the gestures because she's never had to do that before. And Mm -hmm. I also like one thing that's very small about it, but I like that it isn't completely, like, good. Like, some of the pictures don't really work. But, you know, Itsomi is very quick to be like, okay, can you show me this in real life so that uh, he can figure it out? It's very, very sweet Mm -hmm. um, that, like, like you can tell he's going to, you know, adjust it to fit what he needs as a as a, a learner, but that like, you know, it's like just right away he is very yeah, again, very quick to point out, well, I really appreciate it. I don't understand this part, so can you explain it to me and you know, all that. So again, like we've already said, he's so quick, so open to learning right away to make sure that he can mm-hmm. communicate with her in the best way for her. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that she just really likes the fact that he is making such a big effort to really become part of her world and be able to speak with her in this way. Mm-hmm. 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 Totally, totally. Gianna, what is one of your likes? So this is just a very, very small thing, but it was really sweet of Itsuomi to tell Yuki to be careful on her way home. It's just very considerate. I really like when somebody says something just like so simple just to show that they care that you're safe and, you know, want to make right? sure you're OK. Yeah. Right. Oh, you know what? I have a contrast to that, but oh? that's in a different segment. Okay. No, not to not to it's to me. Another person mm-hmm. was okay. getting about at her about where she was going. All that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say that I like that even though. Itsuomi is telling her like, oh, you know, get home safe. I think that he just sees her as the woman that she is. Yes. So she's going to know how to get home, you know, be safe. But I know you know how to get home versus Mm -hmm. another person. But we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. 
Ayu, what is one of your likes? So um, this also kind of relates. We didn't talk about this scene in episode two, but, you know, uh, Oh, she mm. does point out to Nin to be careful about like going up behind her and stuff and, uh, you know, mm. like surprising her uh, because, you know, Yugi, because she can't hear, she has no way to know that you're about to, you know, touch her, etc. And Nin does also convey the same thing to Itsomi in this episode when they're at Rock and Robin. And so, of course, he also is apologizing and everything. But Yuki tells Itsomi that it's okay if it's him. And I just thought that was so cute. Because that's like a very vulnerable thing to admit as well. Oh, definitely. I actually, I didn't realize that she had like said that to him. I thought it was something she thought to herself. So that makes it a billion times better. <laughs> yeah, she wrote it on the on the whiteboard. So yeah, it was just like, oh, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> She's so bold. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. Just inject it in my veins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll say Shin and Emma's introduction is kind of cute. Although Yuki doesn't understand them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like they're they're drunk or tipsy in a fun way and not a bad way, which is That's nice. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also kind of like being an introvert and like somewhat of an awkward person. That's like my worst nightmare to just be like bombarded by drunk people trying to like strike up a conversation with me. I also am not very big on drinking myself. So it's just like... Oh, God, Mm. that's like my personal hell in a way. (laughs) Right. Right. I mean, I think, you know, if there's pros and cons. For sure. For sure. If I was like in a bubbly kind of mood, I would be all for it. But like the idea of that happening to me like tonight, I would die. (laughs) Yeah. No. um, I think my last. uh, This is so funny. My birthday from last year, not this year. It's been past, y'all. But my birthday from last year, I went to Vegas and I went to the RuPaul's Drag Race. Like the they have like a show. And so because I was by myself, but I was I sat next to like these two friends and the guy was very clearly like tipsy and getting too drunk. But he was so nice to me. And sometimes you really just need that like oh yeah people if you want to travel on your own you can i'm not gonna i feel like if you want to you should you shouldn't just limit yourself to traveling if you have someone you know or just in any activity you know you can go to the movies by yourself you can eat on your own it's fine um but just having these like little cool interactions is also nice as well if you're like in a in the mood to accept it yeah yeah Like I said, as long as I'm in the mood, like, that sounds like a really fun time. But I just got to be, like, ready for something like that. (laughs) Right, Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Should we talk about the laundromat? Wait, no. Before we get to the laundromat, I wanted to... Let me applaud Yuki for asking Kyoya if Itsomi was dating Emma. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You better ask. She was before, she was trembling. <laughs> she was shaking and I was just like, girl, don't it's better for you to be certain about it than to let your mind come up with different scenarios. Mm-hmm. So I was exactly. proud of her. I was like, you better ask. <laughs> for sure. Like yeah, give me yeah. the tea before I really am head over heels. Like <laughs> Yes. Because, um, yeah. well, she could see that, like, em- the way Emma looked at her- him. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> She's hmm. like, um, hmm. But meanwhile, Kuya was like, I can't really tell you, but it's never going to happen. I was like, you kind of told us there. And that works for me. <laughs> right. He said enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I guess any other likes before we're at the laundromat? Well, I do have one that is at the laundromat um, near the end <laughs> where okay. um, so you know uh, Itsuomi asks Yuki how to uh, sign like and so she teaches him and then she asks him who are you going to use it on and he said oh you know like for things not people and she's just like turns the beat red and <laughs> just like oh my god girl <laughs> I just right? thought that was, that was down so bad <laughs> Yes. Right. Like, like she uh, is so obvious that it hurts and it's like so embarrassing but so endearing at the same time yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes it's just so cute so she is she is a dork she really is a dork and i love it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah oh gianna you know 
I really wish that I had written out more of my exact thoughts in the laundromat. I just loved every single second of that scene, like the the deep conversation that they were having and when he's asking her like how to sign more and she keeps doing more and more and more and more and more and he's like, <laughs> okay, like I, I, I totally get it. Like in, in a way that's like her like telling him how she feels, I feel like. Right. Um, that was just like really, really sweet. He just kind of like scoops her up and, and holds her close and like, oh. God, my heart. <laughs> right. And then he talked to her in German. And let me tell y'all, I took a picture. If y'all have an iPhone, I'm going to put y'all on game. So all you have to do is take a picture of words, right? And then you can actually highlight the words and like copy paste it to another place if you have an iPhone. So I took a picture of him talking in German because girly I'm not German never been a day in my life so I'm like oh I've got to know what he said <laughs> and he so when, after he did the little hug thing he said she is sweet girl Aww. okay <laughs> actually so um this is also you know this line is in the comic and when I was reading the comic I did so yeah like he uh he's the same line and one of my uh friends who does speak German told me that you know, even though it does, like, Google Translate does turn it into sweet, it's kind of, like, sweet, but also cute. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh. So it's just like, oh. Yeah. Though, to be honest, for me, that is one of my banana splits, that whole section. Like, I, for the most I part, think the, yeah. yeah. Okay, I get, I get why, yeah. Yeah. For the most part, I do like the, the laundromat scene, right? Um, I really do. I, you know, it is it is a great moment for them to, like, get to really spend some time together doing, like, an extremely basic thing, right? And then, um, especially at night, that means, oh, he's using the dryer, too, which, you know, is not necessarily uh, common. Um, that means he's too busy to do his laundry at home and hang it up and stuff. They have this, like, very, very short time together, but um, they, they make, you know, good use of it. But he does have, like, that whole speech that he gives when she's not mm. looking, Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so it's just like, I know it's for the audience, but like in the actual moment, I'm like, dude, who is this for? <laughs> if you're not telling her, um, actually. Yeah. And then, you know, the, yeah, the guess, uh, the fact that he does speak German and she's not even looking. So she could probably like at least feel that he is speaking. Right. And, and then, of course, he's right. like, there's vibrations with that. Yeah. And she's up against his chest. Yeah. But it's just like, OK, like, wh why are you? like saying these things in this way like do you actually want to communicate with this with her or not like it's just you know it's it's one of the few right. times where i'm just like a little frustrated with how he chooses to communicate because that is the thing it's like you know and i'm sure that not to give oshi any credit but like i'm sure that's one of the reasons why he's a little unsure and you'll see later on some more a little bit more of this sort of thing but um, so, because you still haven't seen it's Itz Itsoshi and Oshi interacting, that's uh, fun. But you know, oh boy. <laughs> but like, Ooh. uh, yeah. So you know, like for the most part, you know, I really, really do love them together. I think that he has been very good to her and is making efforts to communicate with her. But when these things happen, it's just like, okay, but then like, why? You know. Right. I think especially in relation to how open she is, she's so transparent with him about like um, wanting to communicate with him, wanting to know more about him. And so to say, oh, we need to know each other better and then proceed to start talking about it. Why? Like mm -hmm. for what? <laughs> like, I would get it if he was, rather than him saying it, if he was thinking it, mm -hmm. yes. that would have been more acceptable for me. Because totally. then it's like, okay, he's still responding her, to her. It's just in his head because he wants to take the time to know, her, get to know her better and eventually share this. But him saying it out loud, it's like, mm. Mm -hmm. okay, well, I mean, you're telling dead, like, you might as well just tell her. But okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, the snow scene. Not really snow. It's not like a scene, but they both talk about loving snow. And then um, Yuki is like, that's when she's rationalizing. Like, I know he's talking about snow. He's not talking about me. <laughs> but she's like <laughs> blushing. Yes. yes. It's yeah. just so cute. Yeah, it's just the line. Very cute. Yes, Yuki ski in the background. I like Yuki. I like snow. It's just like, okay, but it's that's not what it is. And, and like, to be clear, like, you know, obviously they later do use the 
the sign for snow to mean Yuki, and they also, um, you know, it's it in terms of her name, her her name's kanji is snow, so like it's mm. it's one for one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I also love that Yuki asks about Emma to ease her worries. We love communication for once in an anime. And also, like, again, Yuki's boldness is just incredible to me. I just, I need her bravery. Like, she's like, when can I see you next? Girl, I love it. The confidence. I'm only that brave of I'm honestly trying to fuck it up. Like, oh, Oh. yes. Um, What are you doing? What do you like? Or I'll just go to their Twitter likes to just be like, that's just not the partner for me mm-hmm. <laughs> it's done but i appreciate her being that bold because it's like you know y'all are on the same page now you know exactly where she's coming from by asking that question and i think her asking she asked kyoya but i like the fact that she went ahead and also directly asked him too exactly so it's not like she kept the fact that that was a question in her mind from him yeah mm-hmm. um i just have one more floats your boat i don't know okay. if anybody else has any i finished with mine Okay. Um, my last one is just seeing Itsuomi put up very clear boundaries with Emma. I like that he drew the line and let her know that like he wasn't interested, nothing was going to happen, and he was very clear about it and stood firm in it. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a thing with like the way he did did it, it's very clear that they've had this conversation before. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I immediately picked up on the fact that they may have had some sort of history. Ooh, yikes, girly. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Come like, on, Emma. Stand up, girl. <laughs> stand up. <laughs> like, You've been like saying I'm, that a lot lately on what I've we've been, been recording. These, these people gotta stand up. <laughs> no, I think it's fine because it's been spread out. So, like... <laughs> no, I mean, like, we just keep coming across people that need to stand up. <laughs> yes, yes. Like... It won't be to the point where people need to, like, have a drink count. Maybe y'all can have a drink count for, like, me talking about head pets. We'll see. Oh. Um, I don't know how drunk you would really get, though. But <laughs> we, we could come up with the Show Show Sunday drinking game. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. But yeah, okay, let's move into Banana Split. At first, like, I get why, but so when Itsumi is just like, I don't know how much I'm going to use this guide. I was just like, but she drew in it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so it was just like this, like the anger started to rise. And then he was just like, could you show me? And I was like, oh, that's how he's handling it. And then the anger started to go. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he knows how he learns best, clearly. And uh, at Mm, this point in his life. So that's why. Um, And it's very, yeah, it's it's just like very... um, you know, he's just very straightforward again. He's an extremely direct yeah. person. <laughs> yes, yeah. which is appreciated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sometimes shockingly so yeah. for, for Yuki, but... <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Ayu, do you have banana split? Well, I guess my main thing was all the stuff I said about Itsuomi um, at the laundromat. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My other thing is... Um, You know, no one told Sheen or Emma. I know they were drunk, but I guess no one told them that Yuki is deaf. Um, Oh. And it's like, I'm not sure why. (laughs) Yeah. But that is important that they didn't um, tell them. No, it's like, even if it wasn't, um, I mean, it would make more sense for Itsumi to have done so, but... Uh, not even kill you or anyone like says anything and this poor girl is going through just like a, the the way the like from the very first uh, moment that they show up and when they enter her sphere is like when <laughs> she slams his head on the counter right next to her it's like that's a big shock um yeah yeah so just uh yeah it, 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 i know i know they were drunk but uh it could it was, they could know yeah even if it was like right after she leaves or something just like hey by the way you know something like that yeah yeah right i don't feel like it's with the like i get why it's banana split because i don't see it with the same intent as how oshi is just like i'm not talking about her right Mm -hmm. i don't think it was kind of malicious or weird it i don't know how it didn't come up but yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gianna do you have any banana split I have two. My first one's very silly. Um, so 
Yuki sends Itsomi a text me- a text message saying like thanks for tonight or something and she says like something really sweet and he just replies like sure night and then she's like falling back like happily back onto her like pillow as if like she's like so giddy over the reply but it's like this really like cold <laughs> response <laughs> just like the way he texts is like super not my style he's very um, very casual yeah yeah. Very. The the two words, sure, night. And then like later in the episode, he's like, want to meet up or do you not? Like, <laughs> I'd be like, are Ooh, you mad at me? <laughs> actually, wait, no, that low key, I didn't have that written down, but I hate when people do that. Like, if you like, let's say they're doing something and it's just like, oh, you're doing that. And it's just like, you can not. How do I how do I even describe it? Um. It's like a you can come if you want to rather than just directly inviting. Right, mm. right, right. Yeah. Oh my god, it means so much more to be like, "Hey, do you want to come with us to this?" rather than "We're going to this, you can come if you want to." Like right. there, there's a difference in tone there guess, and intent yeah. with an invitation like that. That's interesting. I guess I'm trying to think about like how it must have been translated cuz I I didn't watch it with any English at all and like Okay. Um like the way that he asks questions, it's like very, very, again, like very casual, very informal. But I feel like, I mean, it's more in speaking. It's like if you speak in a more casual Japanese, that's just like less syllables and stuff. So it would be easier mm. to read his lips. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, okay. so like it does feel like it, it's a very like they're very simple questions like. So, but if you were to translate into Jap into English, I would think like, oh, it's like, oh, do you want to come? Do you want to not come? Like that's how I would translate it. Okay, yeah. sense. the way it came up on screen, mm-hmm. like translating like the the text message, it said, "Want to meet up or do you not?" <laughs> I'm like, oh god, <laughs> right, yeah. Jesus. right. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's, so it's that's very hard the... to translate that kind of like casual. Like he definitely means well, and I think I know, I know he does. It's just yeah. like the tone like catches me off guard. Yeah, and that's basically <laughs> right. every time from the beginning. Every time that he talks to her, even from the first meeting when he's asking like, "Can you read my lips? Can you not read my lips?" Like that is mm-hmm. he's just like repeating the question but making it negative just to kind of help her to. To understand, you know, it, it's it is definitely like a communication thing, but it definitely c- I can understand it coming off as cold. But for me, it reads as like he's trying to give her free reign in like choosing what she'd like. Yeah, yeah, I know it's coming from a good place. I just thought like the way it was presented was a little jarring for me. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we have the same one. Probably not. Probably. Oh. Either we do or we don't. Like, because this is just a very, that was, this is very specific. It was when um, Itsomi was asking Yuki about o- Oshi. Oh, no. Mine's also a very silly banana split, so you can go ahead. Okay, yeah. Because Yuki asked Itsomi about Emma, I understood why he decided to ask her about Oshi. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that she was able to correct his thinking that they were somehow an item. And now that he knows that he's kind of mean or like he doesn't really talk to her for real like that, it's giving him like added context in in the sense that this is how she interprets Oshi. And since he's a guy, he's going to get this is how she sees you. But that's not how he's playing it. Like once they end up meeting, I guess, or meeting sincerely talking and stuff. I didn't know where yeah. to put it, so that's why yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I like that she gave him the context. Honestly, yeah, it's it's like a weird situation. I mean, I'm glad how she's just transparent about him to all of her friends because she also gave Ren context as well. I think in yeah. the other episode to just be like, oh, he's mean. Like, yeah, <laughs> like he's he only signs mean things at me or something. Yeah. She said. Yeah, Gianna, what is your final banana split? Okay, the last thing I have is the exchange of ten yen for the drink. I'm like, if you wanted to buy her a drink, you should have just bought her a drink. <laughs> if you didn't have enough money to buy both of you a drink, and you all, and you wanted a drink, you could have bought the drink before she showed up, <laughs> so it wasn't this weird exchange <laughs> or like a weird like. I was about to push it to be like indirect kiss. <laughs> we could have gotten indirect kiss, but here we, we are. We could have gotten it. Like now, 
I'm just happily ignoring the idea of backwash, but still. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, I don't like, it's not like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. It's a very silly trope that I find very funny, but, you yeah. know. So I think it would have been at least more fun than exchanging yeah. 10 yen. Yeah, indirect kissing is, is a silly trope. I do think that part of the reason why it's not in here is because this is like a Jose comic. This is... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And it's also like they're in college. So like, you know regardless of whether or not you have like your own experience etc and when they do get to kissing it's it's going to be fun but um it's i think the um that kind of thing is just like not necessarily something that comes up anymore at that age i feel like Mm. (laughs) yeah Yeah. no it definitely makes more sense like we grew out of that i just wish there was something different there Mm -hmm. than the weird exchange it just felt very awkward and kind of out of place yeah i could understand that because especially because he's like oh no you don't have to pay for your drink oh by the way do you have 10 yen <laughs> it's like what right <laughs> yeah um, right or then when yeah. she first got there and she's breathing all hard and it's like could you say hi before you just <laughs> <laughs> like i know he's going to be nice and be like oh here's something to drink but still like mm-hmm. dang mm-hmm. she was russian you know yes hi yeah. yes <laughs> I feel like that was low-key ice cream ice cream for me, actually. I was apparently more bothered than that than I remember. <laughs> but, that uh, he didn't say hi to her? Well, both that and the 10 And the yen, yen, yen thing. It's yeah. just confusing yeah. more no, than I see anything, it. yeah, for me. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but that's it for me. Okay. Rocky Road? I do not. I don't have any. Okay. Um, the Rocky Road I have is about Yuki's fish that she's feeding. It reminded me of my fish. Oh. Rest in peace, fishy. It's been 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at, by the time this is out, it's been 25 years, but I still remember you. Like my, I think my mom was like cleaning the bowl and it like jumped out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, I mean, I got over it, but it's yeah. It's still sad. It was, I was just like, oh my gosh, feelings, because it just looked like the exact same. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. Don't, don't you don't have to feel too, too. I was just, you know, just recipes. I mean, I, whatever piece fishes have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have hot fudge? I have an Oshi one. I feel like my. Oh, she stuff. I wrote it in ice cream, ice cream, but it could very easily be hot fudge. I probably should have put it in hot fudge. For me, it's it's it is Oshi, but it's also Emma. Oh yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. Like you know, you cr- you grow, you understand. Like especially as you learn more about their past, etc. Like why she's the way she is, but also like girl, it's <laughs> it's been a minute. He's he's not changing his answer. Like yeah, and it just it's just sad more than anything that like she just cannot let go of this torch and like mm, just the the forwardness of just being like oh i'm just gonna stay over at his house without asking if it's okay and bring alcohol this it's like it's it's giving weird like i don't know it's it's just, yeah. it's just uncomfortable like it's like one of those things it's like if it if the genders were reversed it would be like recalling the cops kind of thing and it's like it should be the same mm. for her but um yeah, yeah it just and then her getting upset that it didn't work is just like it it it's i feel very sorry for her but it's also like oh, yeah. oh my god yeah 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 because it's it's kind of pathetic to be honest mm-hmm. i mean that i know that's harsh but it's like just take it from me <laughs> <laughs> i have been in situations i have no business being in and it is just very weird, even if you aren't like, um, and I'm not saying I'm the Yuki and I am not the Yuki in that situation. I would be, but regardless, it's very weird to um, watch somebody be so forward with someone that has already denied them Ugh. and has been <laughs> firm about it. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah Gianna knows but it's just very it's just very fucking weird and it's just like yeah. i like please mm-hmm. please stop self-sabotaging it just like, like oh you need, it's like emma girl you need to love yourself more to like yes. not put yourself in this situation because yes. you deserve better and you know it just like uh it's you know things do i i would say things get better for her but like 
it just uh, it's frustrating that like even even if we were in a world where like Emma and Izomi met in this episode and like she got rejected and then did some stuff it's just like no, no, this is not how you go about. You don't just keep pushing and pushing until like he breaks. Like that's not how romance right. works. Like w- no, yeah, it's just and at that um, point, right. it's not a true yes if you have to coerce it out of somebody. Exactly. Right. Right. Like if if she genuinely cared about the friendship that she had with him at all, she'd stop doing this mm-hmm. because it just makes everybody around her uncomfortable yeah right the hot fudge i had about oshi is just the fact that he infantilizes yuki Mm. and first off he starts throwing tissues at her (laughs) yep and so i'm like okay it's a tissue so it's not going to do damage Mm -hmm. but it's still like a shock to her and this is the same person that told rin like hey don't do anything behind her back right or whatever And here he is doing it because he sees her out at a time that he thinks she shouldn't be out. Like, who the fuck are you? Like, you are not her daddy. (laughs) He also doesn't know Itsuomi or the nature of their relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, he can dictate, not that he could even if he knew Itsuomi or the nature of the relationship, Mm -hmm. like her actions, where she goes, and when she goes somewhere. He assumes so much more than what's going on. But, like, even if... I know, even if they were going out for, like, a little fling or something, it's still none of his business. Like, it's, yeah. it's just, oh, my God, dude, you need to let it go. Like, it's uh, it's exhausting. He's exhausting. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, she doesn't have to answer to him about anything, and he should just go and live his life. But that's all I have for hot fudge. Okay. Mm. Does anyone have nuts? I don't. I do I not. Don't. Okay, I scream, you scream. I just have one. I have three. Okay. Ayu, do you have any? I don't, uh, something might like re-trigger a memory or something, but I don't necessarily mm. have any specific dislike. I feel like everything was okay. hot fudge. No, <laughs> it was like all or nothing. Right, right. <laughs> no, no, I no, I get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, One of them, uh, well, not, it's not even three, it's two, because we already talked about Emma. So... I lied. It's just one. I lied. Okay, there we go. Um, (laughs) So the one that I have, we haven't talked about. Does Yuki's mom know sign language? Mm. Oh, wow. That's a good question. I I know the answer, but I'll let you find out. (laughs) Okay. 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 Because like so far through these first three episodes, I'm just like, girl, did you do a disservice to your girl? Like, yeah. Come on. I hope that is different. I hope that there's more to this. There probably is more to the story. I just, I didn't like that. I was just kind of like, you, you are mama. Like, you should talk to her in the way she understands. Like, you could do both, but still. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, again, it's just like the relationship between, uh, you know, like, the, it, that is just the, um, the, the nature, unfortunately, for, for some the reality for some deaf people. Like, True. Yeah. Mm. By no means, it's not the same at all. But it's like when you're trying to explain like your for me, if you're trying to explain like depression and anxiety to family or l- let me specifically to an immigrant family. <laughs> OK, no, I I get it. I don't like it for me <laughs> and for Yuki's situation. Mm. I don't like it for her either. Mm-hmm. Well, but okay. We will see. We'll know more. Yeah, you'll see yeah. more examples of other families because, like, for example, one of her friends at her school, uh, Madoka, does show up later as another recurring mm, character. Okay. So, so there, there is definitely like you know she is the main character that who is deaf, but you'll meet other deaf characters more regularly and also like get to see different examples of families with okay. deaf members in them <laughs> okay yeah right right and just different dynamics and stuff mm-hmm. uh gianna okay my one ice cream ice cream is something we kind of touched on earlier i i didn't actually like it when oshi tells rin not to sneak up on yuki because i feel like if yuki was 
bothered by the sudden touches from these people that she would have been able to communicate that herself and Mm. oh she didn't really have the place just like earlier when he was translating without her asking telling other people what her fears or boundaries are without her defining them Mm. I just didn't appreciate that and then Mm. you know Rin goes on later to tell Itsuomi oh like don't touch her suddenly she doesn't like that when oh she was the one who told her that not Yuki herself Mm -hmm. Right. I think it just depends on, like, the context. So, like, if she's on the train, don't touch her. Definitely right. don't. There's so many people. Who are y'all? I don't know y'all. Like, don't touch me. But then, because they were at school, I feel like he was just saying that to, like, get into people's head that he has some sort of closer place to her. Mm, yeah. But if they were, if someone was going to touch her at school, it would probably be someone that she knows yeah like because who would be bold enough to touch her if they didn't actually know her totally so yeah i feel like it's just another isolation tactic that he was trying to do yeah and we see with dean in particular that like she is very aware even before that scene you know she she is she's definitely like trying to be very mindful of yuki and is Mm -hmm. is very good at communicating with her like obviously they they can they can gossip about whatever and and all that like for her just like a completely normal friendship and you know she she does take necessary steps just every day like i don't know it just it's yeah like Oh, she's oh, she's <laughs> like, of course, he's going to do something that like will piss us all off. But annoying that that ended up being passed on. But, you know, again, when Yuki actually has the chance to speak for herself, she tells, you know, it's me that, oh, yeah, it's OK. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 OK, well, that is episode 66 of Shoujo Sunday and our first recap of A Sign of Affection. Ayu, thank you so much for joining us. As a guest on our podcast, it means the world, especially because we had to figure out the time zones and stuff because (laughs) Ayu is in Japan. She's in the street. Well, not in the streets, (laughs) but not like that. Please. (laughs) No. (laughs) But she's living, she's living the, like the dream, you know? And so like to figure all of this out and to be able to talk about this with you and for you to add on perspective of like how other people like reviewed the show and also talking about like the Japanese like deaf community and stuff and sort of their response I like Gian and I really appreciate you mm-hmm. coming yes. on like so thank so you much. so much <laughs> yeah it was a, a pleasure um I guess in in the like kind of regards to that I, I did want to mention the one uh interesting comment I I did find because uh, again, looking around for reviews in general, but particularly like why someone might have a negative reviews. And um, I did see, so, you know, there, one thing we didn't talk about is there's actually a musical for A Sign of Affection and um, mm. something I oh. desperately want to watch. But somebody did give a, a th- this is interesting because it's like, you know, for example, people who watch the show giving a negative review of the comic, they're different properties, whatever. But uh, someone did give mm-hmm. a negative review saying, like, I was interested in this show until I heard that a hearing person was playing the deaf character in the musical. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's not a bad criticism. <laughs> um, I don't really right. know much about, mm. like, the, uh, the you know, deaf actor community here. Um, so... You know, it's just like, you know, I think all things considered, this series does take a lot of effort. And there is like, you know, they they have, um, you know, def- I believe because the, the for the, the author, uh, Sue Morishita, Morishita is actually two people. They um, have deaf people in their lives that like they can, you know, um, you know, check in with to make sure everything is like cool with what they're writing. So there is like a lot of like reality to how things are and you know uh, i do think Mm. if uh, for people who have not had the chance to read the comic i do recommend it because it is also for one thing also gorgeous but there are a few different things they do that could not be conveyed in the animated series that um i think is really interesting um so i do think that like if you haven't had the chance I, i also recommend reading it as well as uh watching it both are great both are it's like again i'm so happy this show is so gorgeous um but yeah i i'm so happy i was able to 
come on and chat about this wonderful show. Of course, I love talking about magical girls, but I do watch other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I feel like people should have you on for more things because, like, you're just a joy to talk to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but before we wrap things up, let's say thanks to our beloved patrons. Yes, thank you so, so much to all of our magical, wonderful patrons, starting with our Sprinkles tier. Thank you so much to Pete, PJ, Akemi, and Miles. Moving on to our whipped cream tier. Thank you so much, Mark M. And last but most certainly not least, our amazing hot fudge tier. Thank you so, so much to Aaron, AJ, Mackenzie, Mark D, and Mary. Thank you all so much for being our patrons. Thank you. And since we are weekly this month, guys, um, our patron crew, please heavily recruit for us <laughs> yes <laughs> like, it will being, help so much uh, being weekly twice this year like you know i mean we're trying our best but we could use all the support we could get so even if you end up in the sprinkles tier it means so much and it helps out a lot it does it really does if we're getting um especially if we're trying to get more editing support so that gianna can breathe Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I guess otherwise, uh, you can find Shoujo Sunday on any social platform. That's Shoujo with a U, Sunday, like Ice Cream Sunday, everywhere, including Blue Sky and Threads. Ayu, where can the people find you and your podcast? Oh, thank you. Um, so... Sparkle Side Chats with Magical Girl Ayu can be found in all the podcast places. I think it's the only one that comes up if you search Sparkle Side, all one word. So you should be able to find it that way. And as for the socials, um, I am, I guess, primarily on, uh, well, unfortunately still on Twitter and uh, Instagram. And um, I am occasionally on Blue Sky. I do have an account there at um, Ayushino, so that's A-Y-U-S-H-E-K-N-O-W-S. -S. And the podcast is on the socials, not on Blue Sky yet. We should probably figure that out. Um, that's at Magical Girl Ayu, again, spelled A-Y-U. Yes, and if you would like to follow us individually, you can find me, Chica Supreme, in the Shoujo Sunday Discord. Ayu also has Discord as well. Yes, I am. I'm very much in the in that Discord server. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, oh, yeah. um, besides following Sparkle Side Chats on your podcast platform, join the IU Hive and be <laughs> in the Discord as well. Um, but yeah, you can find me in the Shoujo Sunday Discord. Um, but I also have Blue Sky and Instagram. That's Chica Supreme. Um, Chica with a K and not two C's. Gianna? All right. You guys can stream my debut single, Twilight Champagne, on any music streaming platform. And if you would like to follow me, I am Gianna Luna on Blue Sky. That's just one word, Gianna Luna. And across everywhere else, I am at Gianna underscore Luna underscore. And that's Gianna with one N. Yeah. And we will see you guys next Sunday for... Another recap of A Sign of Affection. Yes, we will see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.